So I've got the Festo motor here, and uh, it says end at 2.2, but the data format is really the old 2.1. I mean, it's fine. You can call it 2.2, but in CME, you got to call it 2.1 because that's really what the data format is. We can argue with the motor manufacturer or the feedback guys, and they'll say, oh, yeah, it's backwards compatible. But how can something in the future support something from the past? I don't know. Okay, so just we'll just select 2.1 in the copley, and then and then we'll go from there. Uh, the other problem with this motor is you, you, you bundle the motor power with the feedback, so you got to be really careful with cabling, grounding, shielding, and I might suggest a filter too, but when you bundle, and there's 16 feet of cable in this application, so noise goes from the motor power wires over to the feedback and gives you CRC faults. So um, on the feedback shield, okay, so the outer motor shield gets bonded at the drive to earth to bring the electrons to ground. Uh, the inner shield is not connected to the motor case, but finds a path to earth at the drive. Pin one, so pin one is frame ground. You got your data on SS knot, your uh, in, uh, clock on XX knot. You got plus five and ground. And uh, you can look up the CRC fault. So there's an encoder status tab. We'll show you the CRC error. It's a cyclical redundancy check. So you're looking at the data to see if it adds up using a polynomial. It's like a checksum. If it doesn't add up, then it's bogus and you, you can't use it. So you could ignore it. Uh, normally, we don't like to ignore the feedback devices, but if hey, a bolt of lightning or arc welding, okay, you know, ignore one CRC error. Um, this was getting a bunch of CRC errors, but you can see there's a encoder status parameter. Uh, CRC faults fine, failed to detect encoder connected to amplifier, that's a bad connection. Encoder bit on encoder stream is active. So this is the encoder telling you, hey, I'm giving you this data, uh, but I don't, it's wrong. So just ignore it. Uh, I think this actually causes an, uh, an encoder error, but we may have an algorithm to not use it too, but I, I got to check with the firmware guy. Encoder failed to respond to request for position. So we're, you know, we're trying to get the data out. Uh, it's, really, there's flags in here, which are, you know, the encoder is bad, right? It's like, it's trying to tell you there's an encoder fault, not a CRC fault, which is, could be just, I entered the data wrong or, you know, I got noise I need to clean up. But really, you could also have a bad encoder or not plug it in all the way. Um, so it's still possible. So let's take a look at CME and see how we set this up. Uh, from the list, we pick end at on the primary because that's the feedback connector. You can hit read settings from encoder. And it should fill it in 19 bits, 524.288. 12 bits, 4096, multiple turns, no ignore bits. It'll say end at 2.2 when we read it from the feedback device, but it's really the 2.1 format. So please just select 2.1. Uh, we're doing position loops. So servo loop rate, if we're in a current or torque mode, we could update it to current loop rate, but don't burden the processor by doing that, especially on a dual axis or a multi axis drive. Um, it's a good 2.1. It's wicked fast, so you don't need sine cosine, so that's good. Uh, I set the accumulated, like, consecutive errors for CRC ignore to four, uh, so we can keep on moving even if we get, like, a bolt of lightning, arc welding. Uh, we really should clean up the cabling, grounding, shielding, so we don't get any CRC faults, but let's take a look at the error log. Uh, I got a following error fault, um, but I have a CRC error. So this is, uh, okay, so the CRC error came in. I ignored the data. I predicted my position based on the speed I was going, and I used that for the next point. And then, you know, 250 microseconds later, I get a new position. Not much loss there, right? So you can linearly interpolate right through some crc faults it's not a problem you could you know you could say ignore 10 in a row but i mean eventually you're going to have to like fix the cabling grounding shielding or might i suggest use a zenith edge filter i'll show you how how good that is in a minute um but by reading this you know you clear it right like 
now I, I don't I don't see anything in here. There's no more encoder status er no more encoder status errors. Uh, I could read uh, the parameter from RAM, get from RAM 0x12e, and there's a zero there. If it was a one, then bit one is set. That would be a CRC fault. There's other bits and there's other messages. You know, if you just get bogus data without a CRC fault and no warning, well, that's bad. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going along and all of a sudden I went to plus 30 million, minus 30 million, and then back to zero without a warning. I mean, there's a streaming bit error, which should say, hey, drive, I'm going to set this bit. I'm going to give you some data. I don't trust it. It's ridiculous, but, you know, don't use it. And then, you know, the next sample, I'll, I'll give you some good data. Uh, so there's many layers of protection here to uh, keep things going, even with these serial encoders bundled with 16 feet of cross-coupling motor power wires in the same package with your feedback cable. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at also the uh, the pinout of this thing here. So uh, back to the pin on this. So here's the circular connector with NNAT 2.2. It's really 2.1. Set it to 2.1 in Copley. Uh, absolute multi-turn, 19 bits, 524288 of single turn data. Multi-turn is 12 bits, 4096. You got an outer shield which has to be bonded at the drive. You got your UVW, you got a wire that goes for protective earth in the middle. Now this inner section here is, there's a shield around this for the feedback. It's not connected to the motor case, which is good. A good manufacturer does not connect the shield to the motor case or they'll just go out of business. And then you got your clock and your data and your plus five and your ground. And the shield goes all the way through and gets connected to Copley Drive pin one. Again, there's pin one. And uh, I'm not getting any CRC faults right now ah, because I had a following error fault. Let me clear that. And uh, we'll start this thing running on the scope again and we'll take a look at the setup and see. Okay, so I'm running. Yeah, there's a CRC fault. There's another one. So uh, things are running pretty good here. Uh, let's take a look at the PWM noise. Oh, there's the following error again. All right. That didn't come during a CRC fault. Um, so let's take a look at the noise here uh, on a scope. And uh, things are looking pretty bad right now because I haven't fixed the cable and grounding shielding. But let's start at the motor here. When you plug this connector in, you've got to make sure you push it all the way down in hard and turn this uh, quarter or half rev. That'll lock it in. If this thing is spinny, 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 that means you didn't push down hard enough to get it seated into the connector. That's a bad connection. Okay. So we got the single cable going here uh, with motor power and feedback all bundled. There's 16 foot of cable here. And you can see the PWM switching noise here. I got 120 volts AC rectified and I got about plus or minus 40 volts peak to peak noise here. So that's an awful lot of noise. This is the outer shield that's supposed to be bonded at the drive to earth. So I'm just gonna hook up my little ground, scope probe ground here. And you can see just by connecting the outer shield to earth, I, I got plus or minus 20 volts of PWM switching noise. Okay, and this allows the system to run a lot more reliably without any errors, uh, less CRC faults, that's for sure. Um, but the, the system seems to run much better by, by grounding this. Now, you also are supposed to ground the motor case. Right, so when I bolt it onto the frame, I should have a good path to earth. You, you can see the amplitude coming down even further. It's 10 volts peak to peak now. So even though there is a earth connection at the drive, the frame should be connected to earth, and the earth goes to here and it goes down this cable and it gets connected. But that's a long cable. The electrons don't care. They just go everywhere. Okay, so motor case finds a good path to earth. Drive case should find a good path to earth. You know, the, the feedback and connectors should find a good path to earth. 
So again, in this cable, the outer shield is not connected to the motor case, which is good. But that shield goes all the way down through here, comes out this little connector, goes to the adapter, goes to an RJ45, RJ45 connector. That's crazy. And then over to the uh, nine pin D sub and pin one uh, connects it to ground. I got a I got a picture of that RJ45 here. So there's a couple of twisted pairs, clock and data. So clock twisted pair, data twisted pair, shield at the drive. This actually goes all the way back down to the motor. It does not connect to the motor case, but uh, there's an outer shield here. So make sure that all the cases, uh, outer shields find a, find a path to earth. So this, this feedback connection looks good in this case, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this system uh, we'll make it as horrible as possible. Uh, nothing's nothing's grounded here. This is the worst noise condition. We're going to hook up the Zenus Edge filter and see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. Motor spinning. There's no PWM noise. I don't even have the outer shield. This is the worst possible. No case to earth. No outer shield to earth. Uh, the feedback's fil uh, filter uh, connected. That's good, but I'm using the Zenus Edge filter. So out of the drive, into the filter, out of the filter, down to the motor. Differential uh, and common mode choke. So the common mode noise and the edges are, are knocked out with the filter. And so if I look at this, uh, you know, I've been running for a while here. And uh, yeah, I did get a CRC fault, but that was from before I hooked up the filter. Uh, but now that the filter's in there, uh, everything's good. So, 